Hi, it's Angie with News OK. I am back in Cheryl Jones' kitchen. She's so sweet. She lets me in her kitchen all the time to watch her <laughs> uh, just cook masterpieces. But today we're doing uh, a fruit salad, right? Yes. Well, so we this are. is something that's maybe a little, a little uh, simpler, but it still would be tough for me. But it's uh, it's really great for the summer. It is great for the summer, and if you have a good Rush Springs watermelon or any other watermelon grown in Oklahoma, you're very lucky. Um, yeah, now what's the trick to getting a good watermelon? Well, that's, I always think that if I ask the guy that raised the melons mm -hmm. that they're going to know. And I've, I've about decided that they know, they know pretty well the things that we should check on. But then also, sometimes I just get one that's not mm -hmm. quite as perfect. And that's why I thought it would be fun today to look at some things you might could do if yeah. you don't get the sweetest of watermelons mm -hmm. or the one to your liking. Uh, you can, if it's a little green, it's going to be pink and just not have that sweet ah, really? flavor. Okay. And then they can actually even be overripe huh. and be very mushy and not huh. as sort of crisp and sweet. The, qualities that we love in a melon. Okay. So, um, so great ways, what are great, great ways, ways to cut these? Uh, uh, well, to choose it, one thing that you want to look at uh, is, is it heavy oh, for yeah. its size? And this one is quite heavy. Very heavy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's and I, a good I usually try to find my melons, because I live in Enid in Oklahoma City, I try to find melons from either Cleo Springs, which is west of Enid, or um, Rush Springs, uh -huh. which is the uh, the watermelon capital of the world. They've named yeah. they, they themselves that because they've had this wonderful festival, and it's mm -hmm. coming up. In fact, it starts uh, Thursday night and goes through the weekend. Wow! So, so, uh, so there, it's not as simple as, as it's not always as simple. You want to look at the stem end should be um, sort of starting to die. But then occasionally I have someone that says, oh, no, that's a sign it's overripe. Huh. So, uh, and then they talk about, we used to thump the melon. Well, they say now that slapping, slapping and if you want to hear this sort of hollow, full mm -hmm. sound. Well, so I'm going around slapping right. melons, and you're thinking, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, you can't judge a book totally by its color. You wouldn't want to get one that had a a lot of bruises on it mm. and it also should have a little sort of yellowing on huh. one end where this part laid against the huh. ground okay and that's that's pretty important that's as a well. good sign and when you when you get ready to cut a melon it's a good idea to have a a baking sheet or something that catches sure. all the juice mm -hmm. because i gotta tell you if you're carrying a piece of melon across the kitchen or you're doing it on your cabinet, you know, that sugary sweet water. It's like spilling sugar water I somewhere if you, if you don't. So. And, and there is a technique to cutting, right? There is a technique. I like to use a good sharp butcher knife and depending, and I cut, there's no right or wrong way to cut it. I usually cut it according to the room I have in my refrigerator. There you go. <laughs> if I have a shelf that's uh, tall, like milk carton size, mm -hmm. I've been known to even cut Oh, wow. This by thirds like this huh. because I can stand this in yeah. up in the refrigerator, especially if it's just the two of us and we're not going to eat the whole melon right. at one time. Right. Uh, and then I might also have a little skinny space that's not so tall. So in that, cut it that way. reason, I would cut it uh, this way so that it doesn't stand up as tall and cut it all okay. you know, all the way across that way. Interesting. So you can do that. I know. You, <laughs> I know it. Okay. I want to do it. So now we're so, going to get into the fruit salad. Right. Okay, so yeah, now I see an interesting thing here. You've got the watermelon cut in half and it's in a bowl. Right. This is, uh, and I have put some plastic wrap mm -hmm. over the top. This is so I can store it in the refrigerator without it leaking sticky juice all over my uh -huh. fridge shelf. And worse yet, if you have there the you open shelves, you're going to get the little drip That's down true. all over. And you think that it, you've got it covered, but this huh. is a little extra okay. precaution. So, um, all right, so now on to the fruit salad. Right. What we're going to do is I've. Um, gotten some pieces of watermelon, mm -hmm. and I just cut it in chunks. You could use a melon baller if you like and make it different, but I had uh, several round fruits that I was going to mix with it, okay. uh, like the strawberries, which are red, and of course I like to use the all so red beautiful. fruits because it's uh, so pretty yeah. uh, this time of year, and I cut that. So it's again. a red salad. Or it's red a fruit red salad. fruit salad. That's great. And uh, it's so easy to do. I, I always like to cut my strawberries in hearts, and I know that oh, sounds kind of silly, no. but um, it's just something that is kind of Well, and it helps to get the, the top off, so. Right. And, the, of course, some of the clamshell strawberries are not really shaped 
like sure. a heart when you get through, but then the ones that have the little pointy mm -hmm. bottom on them are. So make uh, a pretty appearance with mm -hmm. the watermelon. Wow, so you, you could try to get anything that's reddish. Red, red grapes. Mm -hmm. um, you could use red pears uh, that have the red skin. You could even add apples and leave mm -hmm. the skin on if you want. Um, the red plums that are now, and I found, and these are, you only see these about once a year. Mm -hmm. And it's not exactly eating local because we don't grow these in Oklahoma, but, but what are these? these are red currants and they have a little, they sort of burst with a tart, lovely flavor and they have a lot of uh, natural fruit pectin in them. I'm going to add the red grapes to this and uh, they make a pretty, I like to just garnish the top ah. of a, a serving with them when I get them sure. uh, in there and we're going to add just a few of those. Did you try to find the seedless grapes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot easier. Definitely. Yeah. Seedless watermelons are great, too. And there are some growers in, in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm using a little bit of mint here. Mm, that smells that just good. Adds, doesn't it smell good? It does. And then I'm going to take a small amount of uh, lime juice. I'm just going to take the end off that. And uh, I like to just put this over sure. the uh, the fruits. Now, you could have a whole lot of other fruits in here, mm -hmm. but just a tiny drizzle of the lime juice. And um, to me, it just makes, it brightens the flavors. And sure. this is a little bit of our Oklahoma, Oklahoma honey, honey that we love mm -hmm. so much. And I'm just gonna drizzle a tiny amount. It doesn't take much, because all of these fruits are, are mm -hmm. pretty sweet. And we have the juice, and then we're gonna, um, I'm gonna, cut up some mint like this, just little mm -hmm. tiny pieces, and uh, drop that in. Wow, you make it look so easy. <laughs> That's got to be tough to cut those little... No, it's not. It's not. You just... Um, uh, we're going to get Angie cooking yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's very fortunate. Her husband yes. is loves to cook. He's the cook. It's fabulous. I, I so, try to help. My daughter's husband loves to cook as well, so it's, it's really a nice. It's, it's a nice. She likes. She enjoys baking. Mm -hmm. Yes. But he he does a lot of cooking. So you oh, just so put pretty. that all together. Isn't it pretty? And you just kind of toss the salad around. Mm -hmm. Now I've left a majority of watermelon in this because sure. I'm a total watermelon, watermelon. person. I yeah. love watermelon. Um, and then we'll just dip it up in now, a little did we bowl. Put the honey in? We did. I drizzled it all over the so top. So you don't, just don't put too I much. didn't make a separate dressing in a bowl or anything ah. like that. I just did it on the top and then I just tossed this. Gotcha. Because it's also juicy. So you, oh, okay. So you use it as a dressing. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a little dressing. And it just adds another little dimension of flavor. Oh, how and, pretty. Mm-hmm. And then um, we can simply um, take our... We might put a little... Let me just there you go. grab one of these yeah. and put on. And then we'll take a little bunch of Aww. our... And those are edible as well, obviously. These are. They're... they're um, you might... You want to taste one? Sure. Try this. They're just... It, it'll just kind of pop with a little tart. Sure it has a little seed in it. But they're yeah. edible. Mm -hmm. And it has a little tart... I think it adds a brightness to the... Ooh, to it the is salad. tart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to make jam with that. Oh, and okay. and it, with these currants, and it's great for oh, and then you adding to whipped cream. And I'm just going to put a little tiny mint, yes. mint to to the bowl, and there it is, oh, a watermelon is so pretty. Uh, red fruit salad. It's obviously <laughs> good for you. You're oh, yes. The red fruits have yeah. all sorts of uh, wonderful uh, nutrients that help us out. And so it it's perfect looks for like summer. perfect on a hot day because it's cool. Mm -hmm. you know? It is, oh. and it's not quite as watermelon running down the chin as we can sometimes <laughs> get with true. the melons. So. That's true. So for more information, obviously check out Cheryl Jones' Passion for Food column in the live section of The Oklahoman. Yes, thanks Absolutely, so much. and make that watermelon festival in Rush Springs. There we go. Thanks so much.